Hey, hey, how's it going guys? My name is Elwood and today we are looking at Legend of Cinema, a brand new indie game just released on Steam and to answer the ultimate question, is it worth your time? So, Legend of Cinema is a single player retro indie pixel art JRPG Final Fantasy wannabe set in a fantasy medieval world light years away from Earth where you play as a boy from a village somewhere, your brother goes AWOL from farming duties and it's your job to get him back. That's the base story anyway. So, aesthetically the game is definitely 16-bit inspired due to its design. We've been looking at loads of 16-bit games these last two weeks, haven't we? <laughs> it has that obvious Final Fantasy feel, except with less serious visuals and brighter designs. More similar to Secret of Mana, you could say. Colours used are very bright, which gives the game an overall light-hearted, childish feel. Texture and detail designs are decent, with nothing too out of the ordinary. Contrasting is fine, no real lighting effects, and very bog standard UI and text boxes. Overall, the game looks something straight out of RPG Maker, if I'm being honest. The level layouts are absolutely massive, way too big to be fun, and points of interest are spread out in corners of huge areas. For a game with potential random encounters per step you take, what a stupid idea. Sometimes you swear certain indie devs have never played a similar game as the one they're designing before. If they copy and pasted Pokemon Blue's areas, it would have been a lot better than miles and miles of open space. Horrible. The character designs though are pretty decent. Your party has fully animated casting, attacking and stationary sprites that do look decent. Enemies on the other hand were clearly rushed in their design. No attack animations at all from what I saw. Every mob and boss just has a still sprite throughout the whole fight. Not even a slight move forward to indicate they're attacking. Now although this is only a visual flaw, it doesn't really make the game feel finished to me. Bit of a shame really. The OSTs in Legend of Cinema, on the other hand, are very decent. Probably the game's greatest asset anyway. Surprisingly catchy, upbeat and charming. Good combination of retro sound effects and general instrumentals that blend very well into a nicely paced assortment of music that is mostly a pleasure to listen to. There are a few annoying soundtracks, but the mini boss theme and the cave theme in particular are very good. And the victory fanfare you hear after winning a battle, I have to be honest, is fucking awesome. I really do like it. Everything else sound related is pretty standard, similar sounds used to other indie games I've played like Barony, overall pretty decent from a sound perspective. Now for the gameplay. So Legend of Cinema is as I said a Final Fantasy wannabe. That means there isn't any difficulty options which is always nice. It is what it is whether you like it or not. When you first start your adventure you're given a very short opening scene to explain the story in a bit more detail. You name your character, then play. As like all Final Fantasy wannabes, the game is obviously open world, you go through turn based combat, use melee and magic, flee, equip different weapons, armour, accessories, all that good stuff. When you venture to the starting town, you're told to find your brother. He's buggered off for unknown reasons, so the king of the town asks you to find him. You'll be going through lava caves, icy plains, forests and much more in hopes of locating your broski. The story does progress into something much bigger and a lot more interesting as you go, but it is very boring at the start. On your travels you'll be able to recruit two other teammates for a total team of three, which unfortunately you can't change or recruit more, which is another big shame. The game has plenty of NPCs to speak to, shops to buy things from, items to use, areas to unlock and progression to be made. You save the game via the open world map or by speaking to fairies in other areas. Again, nothing of the ordinary. Combat in Legend of Cinema, although visually not complete for me, is pretty decent. Other than your general attacks, magic that uses MP, guard, etc, you do also have abilities. Abilities use the RG resource which is generated by dealing and taking damage. When you first start the game you have three abilities to use, most noteworthy the double attack and higher damage attack. Good feature to start the new game with that does mix up the gameplay from the ever growing overly populated Final Fantasy wannabe games. Enemy abilities on the other hand are pretty crap. As the enemies are not animated at all, there is no visual immersion whatsoever. Although you do get a graphical animation for the damage caused like bite marks, fire pillars and smoke effects, as the enemies are all telepathic stone statues that can attack you without moving, they have no sense of power, danger or threat to the player. 
Literally, they could have put in the classic Final Fantasy 1 sprite flash would have been better than nothing at all. How you can animate the player characters and not think of animating the enemy characters really does baffle me. So for the ultimate question, is it worth your time? Now, this will be a first in my Is It Worth Your Time reviews, but on this very rare occasion, I played the game for over two hours. By the first hour, it was slowly becoming a chore to play, and after the second hour, I literally couldn't play it anymore. On that basis, I'm gonna have to give this game a NO CONTEST! <laughs> as I didn't complete it, and do not want to complete it, I cannot give this game an honest rating. The game will therefore sit in limbo forever, kinda like when review sites put to be decided, except in this case we will remove the 2 and the B. The game is terribly polished, overly large areas to search, random encounters way too often, groups of mobs larger than one take way too long to kill, the overworld is boring and dull, the wall boundaries are terrible, and the decent combat I mentioned gets very boring very quickly. I was gonna stop playing when I got to the Sand Kingdom with a fucking door puzzle, but I thought, no, 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 I'll continue, I'll give it a chance. But what really pushed my decision over the edge was the Reaper fight. I went to some genie city in the clouds, a paladin told me to save some guy, I went through a large dungeon, then I am forced to fight the boss that I am way too low level for. Now, fair enough, I obviously went somewhere I shouldn't have in terms of level difference, but I was able to flee from every single random encounter to get all that way in the first place. By the time I realised, I thought to myself, fuck backtracking all the way back to the overworld. You must be joking. Due to all these reasons, Legend of Cinema, to me, doesn't feel like a complete game. It just feels like everything was thrown together as quickly as possible to get a chargeable game on the market as quickly as possible. It's for that reason I'm not willing to waste 30 hours of my time completing a game that I think is too boring to actually play in the first place. And the reason why I'm here is to tell you if games are truly worth your time. The best advice I can give? Don't buy it. Spend your £6.11 on something else more worthy of it. Like Super Star Path, and that's half the fucking price. I know some of you may feel I've been a bit harsh in this review, but remember, I'd rather you spend 10 minutes watching a video of mine than time and money on a game that just isn't worth it. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if you want to see more games I'll be reviewing each week, and thank you all for the lovely comments on all my other videos, guys. It really does mean a lot to me. More game requests, we need those, so pull your fucking fingers out. <laughs> but as always, all the best, guys. Take care.